What happened with ECW was this. Whether the company was run right or run wrong, whether it was a good product or a bad product, whether it had its day or not had its day, whether if we had survived long enough to get to the next generation of stars, and we would have had CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, all the kids that you see coming up today or, or that you have for the past few years, those would have been our guys. So what happened is that we lost our distribution. We lost TNN, which became Spike TV because they were owned by Viacom and they cut that huge multi-million dollar deal with Vince. We were going to move then to USA Network. The president of the network, Stephen Chow, was hot to get ECW to replace WWE, then WWF. Barry Diller, the chairman of the board of USA Network in that, in that era, made the decision, if I can't have the number one program, which he did, clearly, WWE, then why would I want the number two or number three program? Can't be number one? I'm going to change the image of the station. Turner, which had a distribution channel for wrestling and was going to dump WCW, had such a bad taste in their mouth from WCW, they wanted nothing to do with wrestling. So I'm out on that platform. The only other big platform at the time was going to be Fox. Arthur Smith, who now has his own production company called A. Smith Co., and I worked with them to do some of the UFC countdown shows, um, and they did a lot of stuff with uh, 51 Minds, who produced uh, your show as yeah. well. Um, Arthur Smith was the head of Fox Sports at the time, and Arthur Smith had the vision of doing an afternoon strip, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, half hour every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The economics of doing that show was so not viable to stay on the air that I knew we would fold 12 weeks, 13 weeks, 14 weeks down the road if we even attempted to do the strip show. They would not give us a slot on Fox that I could play into, satisfy the licenses, satisfy some advertisers, and keep the company afloat. What it boiled down to was, end of the day, distribution. We had no distribution. So it didn't matter if you had a product or not, or even if we had the financing, which we didn't because the pay-per-view companies held back our money. When we went into bankruptcy, this is something that is a very funny, well, it's not a funny story. It's, it's a kind of a sad story. But when we went into bankruptcy, we were owed $2.8 million by the pay-per-view. And they wouldn't even give us 10% of our money because they literally, a, a, and I'll call him out on this, the executive vice president of In Demand was a guy by the name of Dan York. And Dan York said to me, once you get distribution, we'll give you your money. We owe you $2.8 million. But if you don't get distribution, we know you're going down. And it's going to be cheaper for us to pay pennies on the dollar to a bankruptcy trustee than to just give you money now and bet that you'll be around in six months. Wow. And the day that conversation, which was when Mindy Herman was going to leave in demand to go back to running the e-network, so she couldn't help us. And Brian Rico, who was a huge ally of ours, uh, was overpowered by Dan York because he, Dan York was the one guy that outranked Brian Rico. So no one could stop this tyrant, and he had just done the same thing to Bob Arum, but Bob Arum had enough finances to take them to federal court and sue them right. and get his money and then settle on a new distribution deal for pay-per-view. Had we gotten enough distribution, we would have stayed in business and redefined the company. The fact that we couldn't get distribution makes me the schmuck, the bad businessman that everybody points to to this day even though if you consider this, even though we were owed $2.8 million, the total debt of the company was $7 million, four of which was my family's investment in the business. And then again, if we had gotten that 2.8, that could have carried us for years. Still, the company went down $7 million in the hole, and that was the end. We were bankrupt. TNA has lost that much in a month many, many times. That company has to be, and I don't know their finances today, but when I was speaking to them a couple of years ago, 
about coming in to, to be the president of the company. I know that there were people in that company telling me they were 70, 80, close to $90 million, in, which means they had to have months where they lost $7 million. Took us seven years to lose $7 million, and we still had $3 million coming in right. that we just couldn't get our hands right. on, that we couldn't collect. So again, now that we understand the word choke point, we know that content's a choke point. If you have content, you're fine. We had the content. So the two choke points become financing and distribution. If we had the distribution, we could have had the financing. Right. But once you didn't have that distribution, you're out of business. And then no money to go back and sue the cap for the 2.8. Could never have afforded the lawsuit. To me, as a man, a dirt bag place. As a business strategist, smart play for him. I mean, it was a weasel move. I don't, if your mother, if you owe so much money, you pay the money. Oh, it was a scumbag. I mean, I hate the guy to this right. day. I mean, you know, and I mean, I, I, I'm. So then you can understand why I did it. No, actually, I think it was, I, th I also think it was a bad business move because had he kept another promotion involved, he would have had enough. See, that's why once we went out of business, so many other promotions found it easy to get on to in demand. Because they were dying for content. Yeah. They needed new content providers and they were a distribution channel of pay per view. Had they kept us alive with the money that they owed us, then nobody could have held them up. They would have retained more leverage than they had with Vince McMahon. They would not be dictated to. They would also retain more leverage when UFC came aboard or they were seeking out boxing promotions because we were giving them a steady flux of income. We did three pay-per-views our first year, four our second, uh, six our third, and they ordered seven for the year that we went out of business. And they probably would have bumped us up to 10 or 12. Once we went out of business, it, it literally set a shockwave through them because WCW went out of business at the very same time. So now they were starving for content to fill all these pay-per-view days. It was a dumb move on his part, too, because why wouldn't you keep that revenue source alive? Right. We would have certainly drawn them more than $3 million in the year 2001 based on the brand name of ECW. Had they given us our money, we would have retained Rob Van Dam. We could have at least had the money to... See, I couldn't do the Fox Sportsnet deal because I didn't have the money to come out of the gate with it to then demonstrate to in demand I had a viable uh, distribution chip. Had they given us the money, I could have afforded the, 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 uh, the strip show or could have at least done the strip show long enough to say, hey, why not put us on FX? Why not put us on Fox? Could you give, a, could you give us a bigger distribution here at nighttime and on a, on a better time slot and, and, and more than 30 minutes? Could we do something other than an afternoon strip? I would have had options. I could have maybe gone into the syndication, back into the syndication business. I would have had far more options. I didn't have the financing because we were out of money and we're owed $2.8 million. And every time we put on a pay-per-view, it's $250,000 in production costs to have live satellite feeds. When the door shut, ECW is no more. 